Hey, Coach. Good morning, Jacques from WAFB. Um, Coach, I know in the spring you probably had a lot of things you wanted to implement and do with Miles Brennan, and then obviously that got cut short, and I can tell yeah. that it's a little frustrating for you. This is not the typical fall camp. You're not getting the work you'd like to get as a head coach. How much have you had to maximize your time with him, and how much does he have to do kind of on his own as well? Yeah, you know, I, I do believe he's worked well on his own. I do believe with COVID-19 that – that he did as much as he can do. I think that he and the receivers got together uh, off campus and threw the ball. So I think that uh, that work was getting done. Obviously, we felt like we were a little bit behind uh, coming into camp, but we've caught up. We've had some, some tremendous practices. We're ready. We have the full offense in. And I think he's ready to go. He's done a he's done a great job. Steve is pleased with him. Uh, he's extending plays with his feet. He's seen he's seen the field a lot better. Very accurate with his throws. Uh, he's had a good camp. Hey, Ed, uh, two questions for you. One, what, what can you tell us about the health of your team, position group-wise, player-wise? Yeah. And secondly, how do you describe the year that has finally led up to the moment where you're all going to play football? Yeah. It feels good. It feels odd to be watching watching teams and your team's not playing. I kind of feel lost a little bit. Uh, like, um, should, I, should, should I be here? I thought I should be in a stadium uh, coaching, you know. So anyway, uh, we, we feel like we're very healthy. Uh, I do believe we have about three or four guys that have the COVID now and uh, not a lot of guys in quarantine. I think that we're, we're probably better off than we've been all camp right now going into the season. Obviously, we have to be really careful. Uh, but I think that uh, Shelly and, and Mickey and Jack have done a tremendous job of keeping us on track. And our guys feel good. Hey, Coach, uh, Jared Joseph, Fox 44 in Baton Rouge. So, like, last year, the strength of the team that seemed to be coming out was talking about how the offense was winning a lot of the battles during the preseason scrimmages. Is there outside of the ball that's kind of standing out so far from the first two? You know, the, the first scrimmage, it was defense. The defense was, was dominating. The second scrimmage, it was offense, which makes the head coach happy. It doesn't make the defensive coaches happy or offensive coaches happy, but it makes the head coach happy that, that the off, it, it's, it's been even, to be honest with you. But I, I will say this to you. We are so much better on defense right now than any part of the season last year. I feel with uh, Bo Pelini has come in. He's brought a new energy, a new excitement. Uh, the 4-3, Dave Aranda did a tremendous job for us, but I'm just glad that we moved to the 4-3. We're more of an attacking style of defense. Uh, we're using our personnel, and Bo has done a tremendous job for us. It seems like really all offseason has been kind of pegged that Dare is going to get that left tackle spot. And you've been talking a lot about him and how he's grown as a leader. I was just curious if you could go into a little more detail about how he's grown off the field and then also on the field. As well. Yeah. Yeah, Dare, Dare's made tremendous strides. As you know, we recruited him out of Faraday. He wanted to play defense first. It took a little while to move him over to offense and then to learn. But Dare made his biggest improvement when we were practicing for the bowl last year. Uh, especially when we're going to the uh, semifinal in Atlanta. I thought he really showed out in the practices, and that's where the young kids get more practice. Uh, he's become a leader. Uh, his, uh, he's been behaving himself. He's gotten in no trouble. Uh, he's done a tremendous job for us. Uh, obviously, he still has got a ways to go, but I think that Dare is going to have a chance to be an NFL player, be a high draft pick. Hey, and obviously you got the great news about Neil Farrell this week, but also, um, you know, there was all the other news that Tyler Shelton's at least considering it. I'm just curious, where is that at, and what yeah. are the hurdles if there are any there? Yeah. You know, we hear rumblings. Uh, uh, his family has called me, and I know people are talking to him. I have not spoken to Tyler. I think some of his teammates are talking to him, but there's not been a decision yet. He hadn't. The uh, only time to make a decision is to call me, and uh, we take him back, obviously, and we want him back. Uh, I don't know where he's at in his mind. Uh, if he doesn't want to come back, obviously, uh, we wish him the best. If he wants to come back, like any member of our family, we'll take him back. Hey, Coach Joe Garland, Gillen Fox State, New Orleans here. I covered the uh, South Alabama Tulane game last Saturday in Mobile. South Alabama had a game already in hand. So Tulane was extremely rough in the first few quarters. There was way behind. South Alabama was ahead. Um, how big is it that you and Mississippi State are going to be starting on even ground, neither one played a game? Yeah. And how nervous are you 
for this long off season to, yeah. to see if there's going to be some rustiness in this first yeah. few quarters. Yeah, you know, I watched I watched some games this week and I saw some rustiness. And then, you know, think about the NFL guys; they're pros, and you can tell they, they it wasn't the same uh, level of play. Uh, I do believe that it helps that we we both play in our first game. Uh, you know, we don't know what Mississippi State's going to do. We, we're looking at what he's done in the past, uh, but we don't know exactly what they're going to do because it's going to be brand new. I'm sure there's going to be some adjustments to be made. Uh, they got a new quarterback. Uh, we have to make in-game adjustments just like any first game. But I do believe our team is going to be ready to play. I'm glad we're playing at home. Uh, although there's going to be what, how many fans, whatever, I think uh, anytime you play at home, it's an advantage for us. We're just ready to hit somebody else, to be honest with you. Hey, Ed, uh, it's Scott Rabelais. Uh, I know that there's no NFL preseason this year, no high school jam breeze, but typically college football is the only level of football where you don't have any kind of run up to the season or any kind of practice game or anything like that. Do you, in a typical year, would you would you wish that there was a, a one, maybe one preseason game? in college football, and, and, uh, and, and is it kind of heightened this year by the fact, like you said, there are a lot of unknowns, how teams are going to be ready for that first game? You know, I, I, I think that I would be against that. I think that we play enough games, to be honest with you, and you go into the 15 game, and then you add a preseason game, it's a lot on the team. Uh, but I do see where it can help. That's why we go preseason game one, two, and three against each other. We try to make it game-like. And uh, so we try to learn from that. But uh, I don't know about a preseason game. I think it was just add to the season. Thanks to go, what would you identify as a few of the strengths of this team personnel-wise? What, you know, what do you feel confident about? You know, I feel, I feel confident about our running backs. <laughs> I mean, these guys, uh, these guys have shown us uh, – some physicality, some ability to make people miss, catching the ball out of the backfield. Kevin's have done a great job with them. Uh, I do believe that we have a lot of speed on defense, more speed than we've had since we've been here because we're using it. I think the addition of Jabril Crocs has been phenomenal. Uh, he's one of the best players on our football team. Damone Clark is playing very well. Uh, the defensive line is, is solid, but not, not great yet, but I think we can be. And then the secondary, you look at Jacoby Stevens and Derek Stingley, you got two of the best players in the country there. So I think that the speed on defense and uh, running backs on offense right now is our strength. Hey, Ed, good morning. Uh, there was a report this morning from 24-7 Sports about Nel Nelson Jenkins. We got a two-part. Could you confirm if he's opting out? And then also... Can you also clarify the process of opting out and opting back in? If there's a, yeah. a deadline, a deadline when guys can opt out or opt back in, back in. Yeah, I do believe. I think it has to do with school. You know, obviously, if they opt it out and coming back to school and getting back into school, I think that that's the biggest deal right there. Whether it can be a full time student or not, I think that that would. Uh, Present a deadline. Uh, with Nelson Jenkins, uh, as far as I know, he told us he was opting out. Uh, he's not with the football team right now. And uh, that's all I know. I haven't had contact with Nelson in at least two weeks. Thank you. Hey, Coach. Pulling Gilbo here. You here? How you doing, buddy? Okay. Uh, listen, um, since... Tyler Sheldon opted out for the for the NFL draft as opposed to what Neil did for family. Would it have to be checked that, to make sure Tyler hadn't had any improper contact? Oh, oh for, no question, for sure. That would go through compliance, and so would Neil. Neil had to talk to compliance. We need to make sure everything's clear before he did anything. Yes, for sure. And, and, and one more, if I could. Uh, when you were a player and as a coach, where is the team? what is the team usually doing during the national anthem, is that when you're in the locker room getting last minute talk yeah. with the coach? Yeah, sure. We've always been. I don't ever remember uh, being out on national anthem uh, in the past ten years. I don't. We're always inside and we're always talking, and we've never been out for it. Thank you. Good. Yeah, Ed, Ron Higgins. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Uh, good. Uh, 
Ron, Ron, you got to cut out there a little bit. All right. There you can hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you got now. It. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. When, when a player gets hurt on, on, you know, you pretty much know an injury report, how long he's going to be out. But on, on COVID, <laughs> this stuff kind of pops up unexpectedly. I mean, tell me about the process y'all go through of when you get a report or whatever. And, yeah. and like the adjustments you have to make because it seems like it's something like almost every day that you got yeah. in the back of your mind, you got to adjust. Yes. Yes. And that's why. I told the team we need everybody. There's no telling what's going to happen with the COVID. I think that uh, we've got a good handle of it, but once a kid gets it, the next man got to go up. And, you know, uh, Mickey comes tell me, Jack comes tell me, this this person tested positive, this person's going to be quarantined. They give me the number of days, and we've got to make adjustments. Look, two weeks ago, we had everybody on our offensive line except two or three guys were out. Uh, we couldn't go any team. Uh, we adjusted very well. And you've got to make adjustments. But I think most of, uh, not all of our players, but most of our players have caught it. So I think that uh, hopefully they don't catch it again and hopefully they're not for games, you know. Coach Ron Snyder and Lafayette. Um, obviously, the, the Raging Kings went over the weekend with a couple of special teams touchdowns. So just from seeing a game like that, how important is special teams for you guys going forward to, to make sure in that first game something like this doesn't happen to you? Yeah. To you, uh, yeah. Two days later? Good point, Ron. First of all, I, I really believe in Coach Mack and the job he's done for us uh, over the years. Uh, we want to be more explosive on special teams. Uh, we feel that uh, it's one third of the game. And with guys like Derek Stanley and John Emery and Trey Palmer, we should have some home run hitters. We should make stuff happen. Uh, we were seven for seven on field goals uh, last scrimmage. Uh, very good job. Uh, one one field goal kicker was seven seven. The other was six for seven. So we made how many of those field goals, and uh, it was great. So I think that Coach Mack has done a great job. But special teams are a big part of it. You mentioned recently as a starter was Michael Baskerville. What do y'all like about him at that position, and what is he showing at your camp? You know, Michael was the 5A defensive player of the year in Vandro. Outstanding high school football player. I think the 4 3 defense has helped him to run around, make plays. Uh, Bo has done a tremendous job of putting him in, in, in a great position. He's very instinctive, he's big, he's physical, and he's very smart. And he's got a great attitude about himself. I think the 4 3 defense has helped Michael. Hey, Coach, Ed in New Orleans. Good morning. How you doing? Good morning, Ed. Coach, question. Um, knowing that both of your backup quarterbacks have yet to throw a pass in a college game, <laughs> have you told Miles to go into hiding the, the next four months and, like, completely quarantine himself from the world? <laughs> you know what? I haven't told him that, but it's a good idea, and I think he's done that, to be honest with you. I think that these guys are, are, are very smart in what they're doing off the field, uh, wearing a mask. But I think Miles is a very private person. Uh, he's, he's, he's mature. Uh, his parents have raised him well. I think he's all set. But you know what, Ed? Ain't no telling how you catch it. You know, we don't, we don't know how to catch it. We just, we just try to prevent it. He wears a mask all the time. I know he goes home. He's by himself uh, at home. Uh, I think he just goes home and comes to work, and hopefully that's all he does. Ed, uh, Brett Martell here. Um, two, two quick ones. One on, on Farrell coming back. I just wonder if you can comment on his potential readiness for the opener because he's basically got, what, two weeks to get ready. And then could you clarify something you had just said when you said most of our players had caught it? Yeah. Could you specify, like, yeah. do you know about antibody tests from before they arrived or is it something yeah. that's just well, happened gradually? Yeah, uh, it's been a process, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not going to say all of them, but – you know, some players have caught it, and uh, I'm, I don't know the percentage, but uh, yeah, hopefully that once you catch it, you don't get it again. Now, I'm not a doctor, you know what I'm saying? I think they got that 90-day window, so uh, most of the players that have caught it, uh, we feel that they're going to be eligible for games. So we, we look at the players that have caught it, and we say, okay, this guy should be eligible for game. We look at the players that haven't caught it. We talk to them about being very, very careful, so they're eligible for games. But we know that the players that haven't caught it, we have to have some backups in their position ready in case they catch it. Uh, so we, we, we're looking at our roster in, in that manner, okay? Neil Farrell coming back, uh, 
we, I heard he wanted to come back, just like any member of our family will take him back. He had legitimate reasons, this was family reasons. Uh, he felt that his grandma was, uh, was safe and that he could come back and he could concentrate on football and school. So we let him back. But do you think he'll be ready for um, in, uh, on the 26th? I don't know that. I don't know that. He's got to earn his way back. You know, there, there are some guys that have been busting their tail and uh, he's got to start uh, at the bottom of the depth chart, work his way up, and let's see what happens. Hey, Coach. Um, unless I'm mistaken, I didn't hear Eric Gilbert's name in the scrimmage. Uh, yeah. Was he a bit low? Did he do all right? He did great. He had three receptions for 34 yards, uh, one for 18, uh, made some phenomenal catches. Uh, he needs to touch the ball more, to be honest with you. You know what? Uh, we played him at tight end. We played him at X. Uh, once he learns the tight end position, he's a freshman. He hadn't been there in the spring, and we're doing a lot of things with the tight end. We're moving him around, putting him in different spots. So once he learns that position, uh, we feel solid about him. We can move him around and get him the ball more. He's one of our best athletes on the field right now. And then you mentioned just how pleased you are with the transition on defense, and you talked about the team speed on defense. What other factors? really have you feeling good about this transition? Is it just the, you know, your tenacity and ability to get to the ball now? Or is it just mm -hmm. utilizing your playmakers, maybe playing free and not thinking as much? Sure, and, and attacking. We're blitzing. We, we, we've got every blitz known to man. And, uh, you know, we're playing base, but we're coming. We're bringing our linebackers. We're bringing our corners. We play, they got to account for everybody. And as you know, we got some very, very good skill players. Uh, we got some packages where we have our speed people in there on third down, and it's hard, it's hard to defend. So, uh, Bo, and plus Bo knows protections. Uh, he's a very good game caller. Uh, he knows what to do against offenses. Uh, he's an expert at it, so I feel that the combination of Bo being here, the combination of going to the 4-3, the combination of using our talent and attacking the quarterback, making plays in the backfield, like, Two scrimmages ago, we had more sacks than we had half, half the last season. So I think that's, that, you know, it, it get, let you know we're just not playing base defense and we're going to attack. Hey, Coach. Jared Roser, Tiger Details. Uh, I wanted to ask you about a couple of the cornerbacks. With Stingley last year, he comes in as a freshman, a lot of high expectations, but now he is kind of the veteran of that group. What yeah. have you seen from him in terms of his mentality, leadership, and those things? And then yeah. early impressions of Darren Evans as well. You know, uh, we happen to have Darren. Uh, I, I, you got to give Corey Raven the credit. Corey recruits his cornerbacks and coaches them and does a phenomenal job. I think he's one of the best, if not the best, in the country. Um, you know, Derek had a good camp, and he was going against Jamar Chase. I mean, there was a battles every day. Sometimes Derek would win, sometimes Jamar would win. But I'm really pleased with Cordell Flott. I think that he has come along and had a tremendous camp. Uh, uh, Elias Ricks has done a great job. Jay Ward has done a great job. Uh, those four there can, any combination can go to nickel, play nickel, except Derek. Derek can play a corner. Uh, Dwight McLaughlin is coming along, and in the addition of Darren, uh, Darren's a veteran. Uh, I do believe Darren's going to play for us. Uh, we thin at corner, and we could actually use another one. We don't have an initial scholarship for another one, but, uh, you know, because those, some of those guys are playing nickel. So uh, when we play nickel about 80, 90 percent of the time. So we have three corners in the game most of the time. We'll wrap up with Josh Sibley, and then we'll go to uh, Scooter to wrap to finish this uh, press conference. Hey, Coach, this is Josh Sibley with uh, Louisiana Bureau of Football. Um, you've uh, given a lot of praise for Damone Clark and Jabril Cox. Uh, Jabril Cox. Um, it seems like they're already the starters at linebacker. Who do you see as possibly the third starter at linebacker? Michael Baskerville. I think, I think those three, you can look at those three. Josh White is coming along. You know, he's really – Antoine Samples, a young kid. Devontae Lee has just learned the position, but he's hungry to play. Uh, I, they, they do believe it's a real season. We feel like we have a very good football team. Uh, they're hearing all the stuff out there, the challenges, and it's going to be a great challenge for us. But the good thing about this football team is we got some young players that are hungry to prove themselves. They see the former LSU players in the NFL doing very well right now. And they want to do well in college, and they want to get to the NFL. Well, to follow up on that a little bit, you just said you think you have a real good football team. Yeah. 
the, the polls are reflecting that. Are you a little, a little surprised considering how many losses there were off of the last year's team? Yeah, you know, I can understand that. I can understand that uh, people uh, are skeptical. You know, we lost a lot of great players. And, uh, yeah, but and it doesn't seem like the polls are skeptical. Yeah, well, we, we, well, they, they, they might have seen some of our practices and been following our recruiting. <laughs> we got some good young players. The writers' poll sure did. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That, that, all that stuff, Scooter, is good. It's good for y'all. Uh, I hope we're not reading it too much because we still, hey, we got to line up and beat Mississippi State and play one game at a time. And as you know, as the season, I, I do believe we're going to have an ascending team, a team that's going to get better. You got a lot of young players. Uh, when they get when they get in live football games, they're going to make mistakes. I know they will, but I do believe we have a great football team. We have a great coaching staff. I'm excited about this season. Thanks, everybody. All right, guys. Appreciate it, Scooter.